Hello and welcome everyone to the third session of the DuraCloud Brown Bag series. My name is Carissa Smith and I am the partner specialist primarily working on the DuraCloud project, which is both a managed service offering and an open source technology offered by the DuraSpace organization. To find out more about either DuraCloud or DuraSpace, I encourage you to visit their respective websites at duracloud.org and duraspace.org. Please note that your audio for today's call is disabled, but I heartily encourage participation through the chat feature located in the bottom right of your screen, and I had previously posted a chat message there as well. There will be plenty of time at the end for questions as uh, I try to leave at least 10 to 15 minutes for questions. So please feel free to send along your uh, questions via the chat feature, again in the bottom right of your screen, as I go through to the demo today, or you can of course wait until the end of the session and I will be sure to address all of the questions as they've come in after my demonstration is complete. With that, and uh, the housekeeping out of the way, um, I hope you all can hear me. Please see the chat message if you have issues. I'd like to get our brown bag session started. Today I will be focusing on the content integrity and health checking services that are automatically available within DuraCloud. And one moment while I transition my screen here. So the first thing you'll see uh, in front of you today is the DuraCloud web, uh, web dashboard, web administrative interface. Um, it's located uh, in this case at demo.duracloud.org. That's my demonstration DuraCloud account. Um, for customers of the managed service, your DuraCloud account would be located at the URL of your choosing, so it could be your institution name.duracloud.org. Um, and you would use this interface to, to log into uh, your DuraCloud account and then uh, view your content, add content, um, run services over your content, view the health of your content, um, as also uh, view some of the statistics that are available in, in uh, the DuraCloud a web interface as well and all of those things I'll be going over today um, but I did want to note that uh, the URL for your DuraCloud account is something that you can choose to customi customize on your own and again I wanted to highlight that this is the web application that sits on top of your content that's stored in the cloud. So with that I'll simply log in, no need, no need to go over that. And the first thing I wanted to uh, discuss with everyone today is uh, first kind of getting you comfortable with the DuraCloud interface itself. So I'm going to start here in the top left hand side of the screen. Of course you can see the DuraCloud logo, um, but directly beneath that is the Amazon Web Services logo. And that gives you a, a visual indication that the content that we'll be playing with is stored uh, within Amazon Web Services, the Amazon S3 cloud offering. So that's one of the uh, cloud storage providers which DuraCloud is integrated with out of the box. Directly below that you'll see the Spaces column. And Spaces is DuraCloud speak for a content container, a content bucket, a content holder, um, however you'd like to, uh, to think about that. But uh, a DuraCloud space again is just a content holder. Um, keep in mind that today I am de demoing a, a DuraCloud cloud account that is on the uh, Preservation Plus subscription plan. So there are some things that are um, particular to this plan, one of them being the, uh, the two space limitation. For customers of the DuraCloud Enterprise plan you have unlimited spaces at your disposal that you can create, um, but for the preservation plans we keep it very simple with just two spaces or content holders. Another um, <clears throat> interesting point about the DuraCloud Preservation Plus plan as well as a couple other DuraCloud subscription plans is the um, availability of additional cloud storage providers that your account would be integrated with um, right off the bat as soon as you sign up. And to access the, the various different cloud storage providers that your account is integrated with, you simply navigate over here to the right hand side of your screen and choose the provider from the provider pull down window which is in a very bright blue color. Um, you'd simply select the name of the provider from the pull-down. Uh, in this case, my account is integrated with both Amazon and Rackspace. And you can see that the interface itself remains pretty much exactly the same. The only thing that changes is this Rackspace Cloud logo here on the left-hand side of your screen. You'll see that the spaces are exactly the same in both uh, Amazon and Rackspace. And the content is also exactly the same. It's kept synchronized um, by our service. 
So taking a step back um, at the Preservation Plus level, um, when you sign up for two, uh, two copies of your content to be held within the cloud via the DuraCloud service, um, that ensures you that we, the DuraCloud team and the DuraCloud service, will create that secondary copy of your content in a, in a secondary cloud storage provider. So as you add content to Amazon, which is typically uh, the primary provider, our service will automatically replicate, create copies of, and then store that, those copies within the next uh, secondary cloud provider, in this case, Rackspace. So you can see that my indeed my two spaces are exactly the same, and the uh, content that's held within these spaces is also the exact, uh, exact same as what's held in Amazon. So essentially, I have two replica cloud copies, um, within DuraCloud that I can manage, one hosted and, and stored in Amazon and the other one in Rackspace, which is another commercial cloud storage provider. Um, and I'll delve into the integrity uh, services for both of those providers in, in just one moment. Moving along in the interface itself, um, it gets more detailed as you move from left to right on your screen. So should I click on uh, this Carissa Images space, for instance, you'll see that the interface itself comes to life and gives you a lot more uh, information. In the center panel, or center column, you'll see all of the content items that are currently stored within my Carissa Images space, a total of 11 at the moment. And then on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll always see the detail panel within DuraCloud. Depending on what you've selected, it will present you different details. In this case, because I have a space selected, you'll see space details here on the right-hand side of your screen. If I were to select a content item, for instance, I'll click on my Jane Austen GIF image, um, you'll see the content detail uh, panel. So again, the detail panel always appears here on the right-hand side of your screen. So the first thing I want to talk about in terms of uh, ensuring content health and services that DuraCloud provides is the kind of, I probably the, the most, in, well, all of the services are important, but one of the most important things when you're initially adding content to DuraCloud is how do you know or are you ensured that your content that you're adding is actually the content from your local machine? Um, does it land health in, a, in a healthy state in the cloud? How do you know that the cloud providers are indeed storing healthy copies of your content? So we have uh, various services built within DuraCloud, depending on how you add your content to DuraCloud, that will indeed just ensure uh, the health of your content. So the first way to add content to DuraCloud is clicking on this Add Items button here uh, in the middle Content Items panel of your screen. Uh, that would give you a nice pop-up window that would allow you to select uh, multiple files and folders from your local machine uh, that you could use the web interface uh, to upload content to DuraCloud. So I won't go through the actual upload process itself. That's a demo for another day. However, during that process, I wanted to explain what DuraCloud does to ensure the health of your content. So off the bat, as you upload content through the interface uh, within DuraCloud, our service will be um, in the background checking uh, and calculating the MD5 value for each individual content item. So what, for those of you who aren't familiar, what is an MD5 checksum value? Um, an MD5 checksum value I usually use an analogy for. It's very similar to a, a human fingerprint, human DNA, a social security number, um, perhaps. It's an individually identifying piece of information, typically it's character string, that is tied and associated to just that content item. So our service, DuraCloud, when you first add content or upload content to it, will automatically calculate that MD5 for your content item. As that content item is being ingested uh, into the cloud storage providers themselves, in this case, Amazon, uh, Amazon, the, the um, commercial cloud service, also computes an MD5 value. And our service will ask Amazon uh, for the stored MD5 that Amazon calculated and compare it to the MD5 that our DuraCloud service calculated when you first uh, transferred your content into DuraCloud and make sure that they indeed match. In other words, the content item that's am that Amazon is storing on our behalf is exactly the content item that you first uh, uploaded into DuraCloud. We ensure that indeed uh, th they are one and the same. So that's, that's the initial uh, way that um, you can add content to DuraCloud via the DuraCloud interface itself via this Add Mini Items button. We have two other methods that you can add uh, content uh, to DuraCloud through. 
the second way is through the DuraCloud Synchronization Utility, which is a command line tool that we provide free of charge that you can download. And you typically run it on a, a local, your local machine or a local networked server. Essentially, it allows you to point at a file directory structure and bulk upload that content to DuraCloud. It will just continue to upload content, chug away, uh, if you will, on your machine and add content to DuraCloud. Um, the synchronization tool has some built-in integrity checks also. Um, as it runs on your local machine and pushes individual content items into DuraCloud or uploads them, it will automatically calculate the MD5 checksum value uh, on your local machine for that content item. And again, similar to uh, the web, web interface, it will compare the local computed uh, MD5 checksum value with the MD5 value that the cloud storage provider, the commercial cloud storage provider, is saying that it has and make sure, again, that there were no integrity issues encountered as you transferred that content item over the wire, uh, over the internet, into DuraCloud and then um, where it lands up uh, ultimately in one of the cloud storage providers, um, Amazon in this case. So again, it compares the local MD5 to that of the MD5 that was calculated um, from the cloud storage provider and make sure that they match. Uh, one thing I should note, if there is a mismatch detected, in other words, um, your content item experienced some sort of integrity issue as it was being transferred over the wire into DuraCloud, our service would then uh, give you a screen indicating that there was a mis mismatch detected and you would simply need to re-upload your content item um, if that were the case. The third way that you can add content to DuraCloud, so I've talked, uh, talked about the web interface and adding content through it, and I've also talked about the synchronization utility. The third way is through the DuraCloud REST APIs, and these are really geared for folks who are um, more on the technical end of the spectrum and want to interact with DuraCloud from a programmatic perspective. Um, perhaps code your own uh, integrations with DuraCloud from your own uh, applications, content coming out of, of um, individual applications at your organization. Um, the DuraCloud REST APIs provide uh, even further integrity checking services, but again, they really center on the ability of you to pass through an MD5 checksum value um, that you had calculated locally. And again, they compare that to the calculated MD5 um, that the storage providers are reporting on each individual content item. And again, they compare the two, the local calculated with the one, um, with the one that they've calculated. And we do indeed make sure that, again, even via the REST APIs, your content is going in, um, <clears throat> your content is going in as you would expect it to, that no integrity issues have been experienced as you've transferred content uh, either through our interface, through the sync tool, or via the DuraCloud REST APIs. So with that, that's a kind of a snapshot, an overview of how our service guarantees the integrity of your content as you first ingest it into DuraCloud or transfer it or upload it, any of those terms works. Um, but our service um, and any of the subscription plans, or I should say all of the DuraCloud subscription plans, also come with an automated integrity checking service that runs over your content um, daily, every day, um, ensuring that your content remains healthy as it's stored in the cloud. Whether, it's, um, whether content has been in there for a week, a month, three years, et cetera, our, con um, our services continue to run. So I wanted to touch on, on how they work and also how you can check to make sure, um, to, uh, make sure that these reports come through properly. Uh, Linda, I see you've posted a question. Thank you so much. I will get to that certainly with enough time at the end. And for anybody else, uh, feel free to <laughs> keep adding questions via the chat, and I'll be sure to answer them at the end. Um, I, I look forward to the question and answer session, so I will get to that shortly. So back to our automated bit integrity, what we call bit integrity or health checking services. And again, I want to underscore the fact that these services run over all of your content, um, and are available at all of the plan levels. It's something that's just available out of the box with DuraCloud that really differentiates DuraCloud from just storing your content in Amazon or Rackspace, for instance. Um, Amazon is not, is not constantly running integrity checks. I mean, they may tell you that, but there is no way for you to confirm that um, with commercial cloud providers. So our service not only runs those services, but then provides reports to you within the DuraCloud interface itself. So exactly how does this work? Our DuraCloud Bit Integrity Checking Services run over each individual space in your DuraCloud account. 
and you can see the reports of those um, the bit integrity checking service runs in the space detail screen so again I'm moving to the right hand side of my screen now I've simply selected the space that I'd like to see the integrity report of and I'm going to move about halfway down the detail panel um, before I skip over everything, you can see that uh, further details about the space itself in terms of the number of items that are currently stored within it and also the date that the space was created back in 2010. So this is quite an old space. And you can see directly below that that the last health check um, for this space was calculated just this past Saturday. And indeed it was a successful run. And of course you can give a visual indication that, that, is, that everything's all, all clear because it's a green uh, a green background behind this text. If you're interested in a detailed report of the health check itself, um, you can simply click the uh, report link. It's probably not quite obvious that it's a link here at the end of the green bar. And that will give you a pop-up window detailing each and every content item that's held within that space and the information about the health check that occurred. So I wanted to explain um, for a moment how this integrity um, checking service works. So the first thing it will do is um, run over your space, pull out each individual content item, so it streams out the actual content item itself, and it will recalculate the MD5 value on the fly. So on Saturday, May 26, the service was running over the space, streaming out each individual content item. So it pulled out my Pride and Prejudice GIF, it, GIF image. It recalculated the checksum value, the MD5 checksum value for that content item. As you can see in this third column here on the pop-up report and then it compared it to the stored MD5 checksum value that we have stored in our manifest file and that stored MD5 value was the original ingest um, MD5 checksum value that our service stored so um, I may have missed that in a previous step but we do store the MD5 checksum value for our content items when you first ingest them into DuraCloud and store them in a manifest and then we also with the service recalculate um, recalculate the MD5 value uh, on the fly. And so this really ensures that the content that you think you have stored in Amazon is exactly the same content that you originally ingested into DuraCloud and that no integrity issues have been encountered as it's been sitting on the Amazon or Rackspace servers um, as time has gone by. And again, this really ensures you that there's no bit rot or bit loss um, being encountered with your content um, within that's being stored within the cloud. And again, uh, this service runs on each and every single content item held within the space. And you can see uh, the status report in the last column of this graph indicating that every single content item is indeed uh, a valid checksum. One other thing I should note, I said um, that we do indeed store uh, content item MD5s and you can very easily see the stored MD5 for each individual content item by simply selecting it from the list here. So I clicked on, well let me click on something more interesting, um, my Jane Austen GIF image and you can see over here again in the detail panel the, checks, the stored checksum value for this individual content item. And again, that was the MD5 value that was calculated when you first ingested that content item or transferred it into DuraCloud. I wanted to quickly navigate over to Rackspace for a moment and show you that indeed our service is also checking uh, the copies of your content in the cloud on all of the storage providers that DuraCloud is integrated with. So it's not just Amazon that we're checking the content of. We're also checking uh, the individual content items in Rackspace as well. And any other cloud storage providers that we will eventually be integrated with as well. So again, you simply click on the, the name of the space. The space detail panel will pop up here on the right hand side of your screen. Um, and again, you can see that the health check for the Chris Images space was run on Saturday, May 26. Um, our services typically run, or they start off uh, on the weekends. So they'll be running uh, during the instance downtime when you're not really uh, using it probably on the weekends. And again, you can simply pull up the report, the same as you did on Amazon, and indicate that uh, your content was checked on the Rackspace side of the spectrum as well. This service runs a little bit differently um, on Rackspace than it does on Amazon. Um, the first file, uh, excuse me, the first column of uh, checksum values that you see are the stored uh, Rackspace provider checksums that we pull out. And then uh, we compare that to our stored MD5 value, our manifest uh, 
MD5 value and ensure that they do check, uh, they do match. Um, so it's a little bit different on the racks to base side of things. The, the, for those of you who are technically interested, the, the compute capacity is not quite uh, as heavy on the rack space and any of the secondary cloud storage provider side. We don't recalculate on the fly uh, the checksums. We're simply pulling um, the stored MD5 value from the cloud provider itself and then comparing it to our our, uh, our being the DuraCloud stored MD5 value to ensure that no content issues have occurred. And again, the interface itself looks exactly the same. The status here on the, the rightmost column says that all of these content items are valid, as you might expect. A couple other things that I wanted to point out within the interface that aren't directly tied to integrity but are probably of interest to folks. Um, at the space level, you can see a history uh, for a space in terms of the content items that have been added over time. So you can see uh, within rack space, I've added slowly a few items here and there to this Carissa Images space and then just added quite a bit here, um, well, essentially double the size at the beginning of May of this content item, or excuse me, of this space. And then below that, you can see graphs regarding uh, the MIME types um, the file formats uh, that are stored within this space as well. Um, one note that these colors do overlap, so on the file size and file count uh, graphs, the red uh, indicates the JPEG 2000 images that are held within this space. You can see that although there are only two actual JPEG 2000 files, they take up over or almost three quarters of the actual space being consumed. Uh, space in terms of size within this, within this uh, Carissa images space. And again, not only are these diagrams available uh, at all cloud storage providers, but also the health and integrity checking services are running over each and every cloud storage provider. Um, I'll note right now, DuraCloud is integrated with both Amazon and Rackspace, but um, forthcoming soon, I uh, don't have exact dates, we hope to be also providing uh, Microsoft Azure cloud storage, as well as San Diego supercomputer, uh, cloud storage, and that will be our first non-commercial cloud storage provider that we will be uh, integrating with. Um, but again, our services will automatically run our integrity checking services over that content uh, as it's being stored in, in whatever cloud storage provider uh, you choose um, to subscribe to, essentially. So with that, um, let me make sure I've covered everything. I just want to click one last time on the Carissa Images space. Make sure I've covered everything. Um, again, you can see that these graphs are a little bit different in Amazon, but again, they're essentially giving you that same information um, in terms of when I added content, etc., and also uh, the, the content items that are stored within this space as well. So with that, that's really the heart of my demo. I try to keep them relatively short and succinct around a particular topic and then give uh, the audience a lot of time to ask as many questions uh, that come up. So I'm going to start taking questions and I'm going to go through them as they came in. And feel free everyone to start posting your questions via chat and I will be sure to, to cover them as best as I can. So the first question from Linda is, how about reporting on any items that have been deleted intentionally or not from your source directory, not just changed? We do um, the DuraCloud administrative files that um, you don't have access to within this demonstration uh, do <clears throat> log the deletes of content, um, but they are not reported uh, within the Bit Integrity Health Check uh, service itself because there's no real way for us to determine whether you have deleted content items intentionally or not. Um, and certainly, if if for instance Amazon happened to lose a content item or et cetera, that would appear certainly. Um, in the integrity checks, but if, if you, the customer, are using your account and just delete a content item, um, we wouldn't have any way to know whether that was an intentional deletion or not. Um, but again, if, if the cloud storage provider, Amazon or Rackspace, loses a content item, that would certainly appear uh, in our Bit Integrity Health reports. Um, but that, to the best of our knowledge, that has not happened, um, as both Amazon and Rackspace ensure that they have um, many, many copies of, of our content being stored uh, redundant copies being stored, so uh, they're going to ensure that that doesn't happen either. And, I, and I, if that doesn't answer your question, Linda, feel free to clarify in the chat and I'll, and I'll follow up. 
Charles asks, doesn't Amazon charge for pulling data out? And if so, how is that? How is this cost absorbed? Uh, they do charge for pulling content out, Charles, but that's built into the pricing when you subscribe to DuraCloud. Um, this, the Bit Integrity checking service that we're running uh, is built into the price, as I mentioned, on all plans. Um, so that that's really a charge that we eat and is not something that you need to worry about as a customer. Um, all you all you get to know is that your content is being the integrity is being checked in the background for you. Uh, Linda has another question. If you don't recalculate checksum on the fly when looking at the RASC page content, how is that any actual integrity checking? How is it that any actual integrity checking is taking place against the stored file? Well, we're actually pulling the MD5 from the storage provider itself. And again, as I mentioned, they're also doing some integrity checks potentially in the background. Um, so we would be able to indicate uh, whether something had changed also within, within DuraCloud itself. Um, when you're comparing at the Rackspace level. And essentially we're creating copies of that content from Amazon. Um, so if we did notice anything happening, we could certainly um, replace comp uh, corrupt copies in Rackspace from your, your non-corrupt copies in Amazon. Meg asks, what are the re recommended bandwidth levels for uploads? thinking that bulk upload option could slow down my whole campus. Yes, Meg, that is a, a, a very good question and something that we've run into in the past. Um, your upload capability is dependent upon your, your local bandwidth at your, at your campus. Um, I don't have any hard numbers for you in terms of, of what our recommendations are. I mean, you can certainly upload content at any bandwidth. It's just going to take a very long time. Um, so that's something we could work with you um, to set up multiple DuraCloud instance, instances, perhaps. Um, if you had a, lar a large number, uh, a large amount of content that you needed to upload into DuraCloud, you know, multiple terabytes, et cetera. Um, but yes, that would be something we'd have to work with you on because we have experienced issues for folks who have many, many terabytes and they'd like to push that over the wire. Um, we, have, we have ways of making it a little bit more efficient on our end um, to, uh, to pull in that content from DuraCloud. Um, one thing I should note about that as well is we're starting a partnership with Internet2 to really take advantage of the Internet2 connections. So if your institution or university is a member of InCom and Internet2, um, we're hoping to be able to leverage that increased uh, bandwidth to allow uh, a little bit less stress on local networks at universities when they're uploading content to DuraCloud. I have another question here that asks if we have plans to inter in integrate, we being DuraCloud, with uh, Google Drive. And no, that's actually not on the, the roadmap and nothing that we have discussed uh, too extensively within, within the DuraCloud team yet. Um, from a technical perspective, I'm not quite sure how Google Drive works, um, but we do have some technical limitations in terms of the cloud storage providers that we can integrate with. They have to have a DuraCloud REST API. Um, they have to ensure that they're uh, computing MD5 checksums or otherwise they're not really uh, on the list of potential targets. So we haven't talked about Google Drive and I'm not quite sure in terms of the technical limitations why we haven't, but I'm sure there's probably uh, some there which I can certainly uh, get back to this group on. Um, but I will bring it up with the developers as well um, uh, at our next staff meeting as well as, as an option just in case it hasn't come up. Uh, Tira asks, so when I look at your graphs, looks like you removed content at some point, correct? Yes, my usage graphs, that is correct. Um, because this is my demo account, I'm constantly adding and deleting content. So you can see that uh, over time, uh, the graphs have gone up and down to, to, to a certain extent, just a couple of content items here and, here and there. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, if not, again, keep, keep filling in more details in the, the chat. Uh, Joseph asks, how scalable is the health check? Uh, that's a very good question, uh, Joseph. If you have a lot of content, meaning multiple terabytes or hundreds of thousands of files, we will, um, on our end, the DuraCloud service will scale up your instance size, and this might be getting a little too technical for, for folks, um, but we can scale up your, your instance size. <clears throat> in other words, increasing our, comp our compute capacity and the ability to scale the health check services that are being running on, that are running on your behalf. So again, that's something that we handle in the background uh, for you to ensure that your content is being is being checked. And I don't have any hard and fast numbers of what you know what our scalability testing has determined. 
um, in terms of you know what the the terabyte level is or the number of files. Um, I I do know that it's it the integrity service um, runs over quite a few files relatively easily, um, very large files, etc. Um, it it chugs along uh, a little a little less efficiently when you have a lot of small files. So hundreds of thousands of small files, because of course it's streaming out those individual content items. So it takes a little bit while, a little bit longer to run uh, when you're talking about content that's being stored, small files and lots of them, uh, etc. So Martin asks, can we use the MD5 calculated during DCBase submission as a basis for comparison? Um, Martin, that's a really great question. I am I'm not completely fluent in DSpace. I'm sure that there is certainly a way that you could use the MD5s um, from DSpace to check with DuraCloud. I'm not sure off the bat if that is part of the DSpace 1.8 DuraCloud integration. Um, I have a feeling that it's not, um, but you could certainly use the DuraCloud REST APIs um, to pass in your own uh, MD5s, your own local MD5s that you had calculated. Um, you don't have to rely on our DuraCloud service to calculate the local MD5 for you. Um, you can um, certainly pass in your own MD5s uh, via the DuraCloud REST APIs to have our integrity services used and, and check to make sure that the content stored in the cloud matches your local MD5 calculation. Um, Joseph asks, do I happen to know how long checking, say, 10,000 files would take? Oh, man, you guys want hard numbers. Um, I don't have that detail, um, but I could certainly probably get it for you. Um, again, 10,000 files, it depends uh, whether those are really, really small files or really, really large files. So again, it's really hard to, to tell you an, an exact number, um, how long it would take to check 10,000 files. If they're all 10,000 one gigabyte files, it wouldn't take uh, very long. Um, I would, uh, I don't even, I, again, I, I can't even tell you exactly uh, or even a round estimate of how long that would take. But if those 10,000 files are each five, or one terabyte a piece, it'll it'll take quite a quite a bit longer. Um, Linda asks, let me get down here on my chat window. Um, Linda was talking about dynamic collections that can grow and shrink. Seems like a report that would tell me if any files exist in the cloud that no longer in exist in my source would be useful. Um, you can certainly probably pull that from the DuraCloud REST APIs, just a manifest of all of the content that's held within DuraCloud. Um, there's not an easy way to do that through the DuraCloud interface itself, but you can certainly pull that through um, the DuraCloud REST API from a programmatic uh, standpoint and make it much more automated. So you could tell if your local content um, matched your cloud content. Um, to a certain extent, the synchronization utility keeps track of your local content, uh, comparing it to what's being stored in the cloud. Um, and you have the option to, let me, let me back up for a minute, the synchronization utility really is, is a very powerful tool. Um, I talked about it only as a, as a bulk uploader of local content, but essentially its main purpose is to synchronize your local content that's changing on a relatively frequent basis with your copies in the cloud. And with that synchronization utility, you can tell it to synchronize deletes to the cloud or not. Um, of course, by default, we do not ever synchronize deletes, um, but you do have that ability and that customization um, option if you'd like to. Um, so again, if you have local content that's changing quite frequently and you want to ensure that your content in the cloud is an exact replica copy, um, the synchronization tool might be a great, a great option for you um, because then it will automatically just watch that local, that local directory of content and make sure that any uh, changes to content, additions, et cetera, would be uh, synchronized to the cloud. And again, that you could choose to synchronize deletes or not. Um, another question, have we maintained overall statistics on integrity errors to date? Um, well, that's a good, that's a good question. Uh, since the beginning of DuraCloud development, no, probably not. Um, and if you mean integrity errors in terms of what we've seen um, from the cloud storage provider, so integrity errors, um, something mismatching at the Amazon level, et cetera. So Amazon, you know, corrupted one of our files, et cetera. Um, we don't have any um, 
exact you know statistics that I can point to. We haven't written anything about that, but from um, from a practical perspective and everyday uh, perspective, we have yet to see uh, any bit integrity issues um, encountered at the Amazon or Rack Space provider level. So Amazon, for instance, we haven't noticed any corrupted file from Amazon that we've we've had to replace with our Rackspace copy um, at this point. Of course, we are um, a relatively new service, so it's not like I'm, I'm drawing on 10 years of experience here. Um, we've been in development for about two, almost three years, and just launched the DuraCloud service uh, last fall. Um, but we did beta test the DuraCloud service for a, a good year and a half to two years. And again, uh, we never saw any um, cloud storage provider bit integrity issues at all. Um, certainly, we've seen transmission issues with content that's being um, uploaded to DuraCloud and, and lost a bit or two along the way. So it didn't land in DuraCloud as, as we would have liked. Um, but of course, our, service, our services are built into do, to, excuse me, I'm stuttering over my words. Our services are built to detect to make sure that content that's being transferred into DuraCloud is indeed the content uh, that you had locally and nothing happened during the transfer. So th that's really the issues where, where we've seen errors. Uh, another question, is there a way to help manage versioning or do we need to figure that out on our end? At this point, we do not have any versioning built into the DuraCloud service. Um, of course, you could certainly um, figure that out on your end. You could certainly provision snapshotting within DuraCloud if you uploaded um, different snapshots of your content. You could store those in different spaces at the enterprise level, so snap a space for every snapshot. Um, but we don't have any automatic versioning uh, within DuraCloud, so if you upload a, a content item that's changed, we're not going to rename the, the previous content item and, and, and do that sort of versioning uh, that you might expect. Um, however, I would suggest if you do, if that is a, a use case of, of, of great interest to you and could foresee how it would look and how you would interact with it at the DuraCloud level, how versioning would work, um, I would really be interested in getting your feedback about that. Um, and again, I'll underscore the importance that these brown bag sessions and, and all of our customers and trial accounts, et cetera, we really steer our roadmap towards uh, things that are of interest to our customers and our potential customer base. DuraCloud is, is hosted by a not-for-profit organization, and really our main goal is to provide you services that, you, that you'd like to use and are easy for you to use. So again, if you have any clarification on how you might for seed versioning work within DuraCloud, feel free to, to drop me an email. I would be more than happy to bring that up with the development team and get that on the roadmap if it's of interest with everyone. And I think, assuming I haven't skipped over any questions, I, I did my best to cover everything. Um, everyone, feel free to, to keep sending uh, questions via the chat. Good. I have a couple more coming in. Um, I have some filler to, to kill time to, to give people to the time to think about a couple more questions, but um, feel free because really they, that's what these brown bag sessions are all about is getting your questions answered um, about any of the details and things that I've covered today. So Charles asks, are you planning to integrate an identifier system with DuraCloud, uh, for example, ARC identifier, so I can refer to a file with that rather than as taxon taxonomy in the space? Um, good question, Charles. Um, I'm I'm probably not the best person to answer that question. Um, it hasn't come up in conversations lately that I've been a part of the technical conversations. Um, however, we do have a um, kind of a partner project, the DuraCloud for Research project that's going on, and I believe they might be doing some work with identifiers that will be part of the DuraCloud for Research project. Um, we have a, a wiki space that I can add um, uh, add the URL to, um, but it's not something that in the DuraCloud uh, tech team that we've talked about at this point, but I'm going to jot that down and bring that up um, with the development team for DuraCloud, the DuraCloud development team, and I can also uh, contact you and let you know if there's any work being done at the DuraCloud for Research project uh, team as well. Uh, Tira asks if I can say any more about integrating with the San Diego Supercomputer Center. Um, I certainly can. We're hoping to launch uh, a beta testing version of San Diego Supercomputer Center as, a, as another cloud storage provider in the next month or two. And if all goes well, um, but please do not hold me to this, um, we're hoping to launch that as our third uh, storage provider at the end of this summer, 2012. So 
uh, at some point in August, September of this year, we're hoping to launch uh, SDSC storage as our first non-commercial academic cloud storage provider um, uh, available uh, at the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. Um, and again, uh, one thing I'll note about San Diego Supercomputer Center is that the pricing is going to be much more cost effective than what is currently available through uh, Rackspace. Um, so again, uh, as, I, as I keep kind of mentioning, we, we consider Amazon the primary storage uh, provider within DuraCloud as they have the, the greatest compute capacity available currently, um, but we would certainly make San Diego Supercomputer um, available for secondary copies of your content, and it will be at much, uh, a much reduced pricing, uh, greatly reduced pricing, almost half, I would say, of the current quotes that are on the DuraCloud.org pricing page. Yes, we are currently working on, on a couple different cloud storage uh, provider, additional provider options integrated with, with DuraCloud. Um, as I mentioned, Microsoft Azure is still on the plate. Um, we're also working with the Chronopolis team um, for folks who are in the academic, um, the academic realm um, and are familiar with Chronopolis. We're working with that team to hopefully for, provide Chronopolis backup uh, within DuraCloud as well, doing a direct integration between those two systems as well. Again, really with the focus of preserving uh, folks' content. So I'm going to pause for just one moment. If anybody has any last questions, feel free to put them into uh, the chat. I'm going to bring up my last PowerPoint and do a plug um, for free DuraCloud trial accounts. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar, DuraCloud offers the free 60-day no-obligation trial accounts of the service. So feel free to go to DuraCloud.org, click on the Try It button, essentially fill out a form with your name and email so that I can contact you and follow up, and we'll get you uh, rolling on a DuraCloud trial account. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is that these brown bag sessions occur on a monthly basis, the last Wednesday of every month at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Time. Um, my next session will be June 27th and uh, the topic will be about preserving digital media. So um, there is a current DuraSpace webinar series all about uh, preserving and making uh, digital media accessible. Um, I'll be doing a tangential topic about how to preserve digital media in DuraCloud, um, some of the issues that people experience, especially with large media files, etc. If there is a topic uh, that is of particular interest that you'd like me or a guest speaker to cover about DuraCloud or about cloud in general, um, please, 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 please feel free to send me a topic suggestion. My email is csmith at duraspace.org. And of course, uh, more information about the Brown Bag series is available at the web URL on the screen in front of you. Um, and also, I post all of the uh, recordings of the Brown Bag series on our DuraCloud YouTube channel, which is also available uh, at the Brown Bag uh, webpage. Um, and this uh, recording will be available uh, no later than Friday. So um, I always try to get those right up for folks. So feel free to drop me a line if you have any questions or, or anything related to DuraCloud um, outside of a trial account or these Brown Bags. Again, feel free. I'm your main point of contact, and I, and, um, I look forward to answering any questions that you have. So I don't think any other questions came up. Uh, Tira asks if we'll be at ALA. Unfortunately, we will not be at ALA this year. I did a couple, uh, two um, panels last year, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to make it uh, this year. We will be at uh, open repositories at the beginning of July, though, for folks who want to travel to Edinburgh, Scotland. That's, the, I think, the next face-to-face -face, um, conference that DuraCloud and the DuraSpace organization will be attending. So with that, thank you everyone for your attendance today and for all of the great questions. Um, again, I'll just make a plug. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to send me an email at any point in time. I'm, I'm always here to answer your questions. And I look forward, hopefully, to seeing you all again on seeing you all, in quotes, uh, on June 27th for the Preserving Digital Media and DuraCloud uh, Brown Bag. So thanks, everyone, and hope you have a wonderful afternoon.